Hi, everybody, and welcome to the premiere edition of World of Cooking. Come with us as we explore the art of cooking in the kitchens of ordinary people around the world. Today, we are in Southeast Asia, in the country of Myanmar. We are at one of the major tourist destinations, Inle Lake. It is located about 12 hours north of Yangon and sits in the heart of the Golden Triangle, the world's second leading opium producer. Here our guest chef will make three dishes for us. Vegetable curry, leaf curry, and fried fish. And who is today's guest chef? My name is Nila Po. Nila Po. Yes. How old are you? 28 years. And you have one boy? One boy. Yes. How old is he? My son is four years. Uh -huh. Were you born in this house? Oh uh, no. My boss, my boss, born is uh, Bago. Bago. Bago, yes. Bago. Bago is a state to the south of here. This is her kitchen. How many people live in this house? This house, people in 24. 24 people? Yes. How many families? Three families. And this is the view from the kitchen window. Nilar lives in the village of Mine Talk. The houses are built on stilts. But the really unique thing here is that people paddle their skiffs with their leg. It is not so clear why this is, but the tourists love it. We caught up with Nila as she was preparing the fish. What kind of fish? Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Six. Six fish. She adds a little salt, shakes it up, and leaves it overnight. Six hundred. Six hundred. Chop. Ah. Six hundred. So that's one hundred shot per fish, which is about. 15 cents in the United States. Tomorrow we will go to the market with her to buy the food for the meals. But now, let's take a short tour of the lake. Inle Lake is nestled between mountains to the east and west. At an altitude of about 900 meters, the lake is over 20 kilometers long and 10 kilometers wide. It is vital to the region, not only for tourism, but as a source of food. Mine Talk is on the eastern shore of the lake. In the southwest, a large swath is devoted to floating gardens made from weeds and water hyacinth, like these boats are transporting. Many of the people who live here are from the ethnic group called Inta, which means people of the lake. Like this fisherman here, Notice how he rotates the blade of the oar as he paddles. He pushes the paddle backward, then he rotates the blade to bring it forward, and then he pushes it back again. The traditional fish trap this man is using may be the reason for this unusual paddling technique. Men can paddle and set the trap at the same time. This man is selling eel traps. People set them in their floating gardens, baited with crushed snails in the holes on top. The eel enters from another hole on the bottom, from which it cannot escape. If you travel to Mine Talk from the lakeside, the longboat will take you up this canal, under the power lines, and past some floating gardens. Let's take a short tour of Mine Talk to get a feel for village life. From this satellite view of Mine Talk, we can see clearly the importance of agriculture for this area. Abutting the eastern shoreline, the cultivated fields of rice, corn, and sugarcane provide a livelihood for many. But Mine Talk is surrounded by its own floating gardens, where people grow vegetables such as cabbage, zucchini, and beans, but especially tomatoes, which make up 60% of the harvest. 
When Nilar goes shopping, she walks down this long pier, until about a mile further on, she arrives at a local market. The other point of interest is this hotel, where Nilar's husband works as a boat pilot. Mine Talk has a population of about 2,000 people, with extended families living together in one house. This woman, Tata So, will guide us around the village. Immediately we meet these food vendors plying the village's canals. Let's have a look at what they are selling. What does he have? And uh, rice crackers. Rice crackers. <laughs> Sometimes it's sweet. Okay. Okay. You want some? Yes. This is the house where women make cheroots, a kind of cigar. Let's go take a look. Walking in the house, past the fishing nets, and out to the veranda, we find five women at work. Cheroots are cigars that have both ends cut square, instead of tapered. The tobacco grows on the western side of the lake. And now the grandmother is applying the label. We continue on, gliding silently past this elementary school. A bit further on, we come to a floating garden. The Inta started this type of gardening only a couple generations ago. But now the fertilizers and chemicals they use are polluting the lake. These women are returning with firewood. Many people, including Nilar's extended family, rely on wood cut from the surrounding hillsides as fuel for cooking. But with the increasing population, deforestation is becoming a problem. Runoff from the heavy rains carries both soil and agricultural chemicals into the lake, which can have adverse effects on the fish. This is the pier Nilar walks down when she goes to the local market. Pollution has rendered the lake water unsafe to drink. In addition to agricultural chemicals, other sources of pollution are human waste and the country's largest open pit coal mine, located just a few miles distant. Attached to the pier is a water tap where this woman is filling her canisters. This is where Nila gets her water, too. After nearly five decades of military rule, in 2010, Myanmar began transitioning to a democratic government. With United Nations support, plans were drawn up to reverse environmental degradation. The effects of pollution on the food supply, however, are not yet known. Next day, the sun rises behind the Buddhist temple, and it is market day. The market rotates among the villages, taking place here every fifth day. Nila should be arriving soon, and while we are waiting for her, let's take a look around. While Nila and her son walk to the market, other shoppers come by boat. The Burmese have a saying, of all fruit, the mango, of all meat, pork, of all leaves, pickled tea leaves. But here, seafood is plentiful. Oh. 
snakehead fish, tilapia, and royal knife fish are a few of the kinds we see at this market. Ready to eat food is available here too, like mohinga, the typical breakfast dish made from noodles and fish soup, or these atatayar, a kind of pancake made from wheat flour, or how about yi muk, made from rice flour, green onion, and coriander. Nilar goes grocery shopping often. Without refrigeration, she must shop regularly to stock up. A refrigerator costs a couple hundred dollars, about a month's wages. Here she comes now. She stops first to buy a vegetable called yi mon yin. Nilar's translation is water leaf, but it is actually called watercress. It is often used together with pork dishes. Like Nilar and her son, many women and children wear a kind of cosmetic on their face called tanaka, made from the bark of the tanaka tree. Then Nila picks up a couple handfuls of green beans, which the vendor weighs on her scale. At this gas station, she purchases one liter for their boat's outboard engine. And at her last stop, she buys hinto, a kind of snack. Now it is time to return home. Nila begins by preparing the hinto. She unwraps the banana leaves and removes the food. What is that, sticky rice? This is um, hinto. 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 Bean? No. Rice and rice and why? This why? This onion. Uh, rice and onion. And kumpang. It is all mixed together with water, garlic, ginger, and salt, and maybe a dash of sugar. She pours a bit of oil over it and adds a couple sprigs of coriander. Please come and sit down and eat. Come in. Then, she serves it up on the floor mat of the large living room. This one indeed tastes a little sweet. Back in the kitchen, Nilar begins to prepare the main dishes. What's the name of this? This is Yi Mong Yin. Yi Mong Yin. Yi Mong Yin. I don't call English. In English, Yi Mong Yin is watercress. She breaks the stems of the watercress into bite-sized pieces. Then she works on the green beans, or pei tong e. 
Meanwhile, the grandmother puts the kettle on. Now Nilar prepares the mustard greens. This is Mounye. 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 You may have noticed, Mounye is almost the same name as Yi Mounye, or watercress. In Burmese, Yi means water. She uses scissors to cut the stems and separates them from the leaves into piles. Nilar tells us about her life. Your husband is from Inle? Yes, from Inle. He's Inta? Inta. He is Inta. You came to work at the hotel? Yes. And you met your husband? Yes. Five years ago? Yes. In Bago, no work? No work. This is Monye? Yes. Yeah. She cuts the green beans on the diagonal. This is not only decorative, but it helps the beans cook faster and allows them to absorb the flavors of the spices. You and I may think this is broccoli, but for Nila, it is cauliflower. Broccoli and cauliflower are not native to this region. In fact, broccoli has been in Myanmar only a few years. And here, they have two kinds of cauliflower, white and green. And today, Nilar is preparing the green variety. And now it is time to take out the trash. The grandmother roasts the rice in order to make rice flour. This process removes the moisture and makes the grains easier to grind. Do you have brothers and sisters? Two brothers and me. Where are your brothers? Our only one is Go. Another side is Hota. Okay, Hota. Here. And your brother in Bago, what does he do? There's a student. How old is he? Eleven years. And your brother here, how old is he? Uh, this is 24 years. Before she lights the stove, Nila cleans out the ash and bits of charcoal from below. Then she adds fresh charcoal to the top of the stove. She uses a lighter to set the kindling wood on fire. This stove, made from cement, is one kind found in much of Southeast Asia. And now she begins with a fanning. Next door, her neighbor is using a large mortar and pestle to pound rice. This process removes the chaff from the grains of rice and is called threshing. And Nilar continues fanning. Her sister-in-law has begun preparing the family's meal, eel soup. After letting the oil heat up, Nilar adds the garlic. Many people in this area use palm oil, one of the cheapest kinds of cooking oil. The oil Nilar uses comes in a recycled water bottle, 
which is an indication that the oil is a mixture of palm and peanut oil. But the consumer does not know the amount of each. Mixed oil is popular because it tastes and smells better than plain palm oil. Pure peanut oil is also available. It is more expensive, but it too is mixed with palm oil. In what proportions, only the vendor knows. But it is an open secret that it is not 100% peanut oil. Now we add a bit of salt. And Ajinomoto coming up. There's Ajinomoto. And what's this one? Monye. Monye. Nilar adds just the stems of the mustard greens to this dish. The pounding noise you hear in the background is Nilar's sister-in-law preparing the ingredients for the eel soup. These include garlic, onions, and tomatoes. Nilar washes the mustard leaves and broccoli, then drains the water through the floorboards. She stirs a bit, and she's back to fanning. Fanning and stirring. Then she adds the broccoli to the wok. While the vegetables fry, she smashes the peeled garlic cloves with a cleaver on the cutting board. This is for the next dish. You're all finished now? Yeah. Here we go. And now the first dish is ready, stir-fried vegetables. Now Nilar is ready to begin the second dish, leaf curry. She adds the leftover onion greens and crushed garlic to the oil in the wok. This one is what? Butterly. Butterly watercress. What time do you get up in the morning? Fried cookies. Fried okla, kati. And cooking. Yes, and cooking and... Mm, and cooking. Everybody gets up at 5 o'clock? Yeah, everybody. And this, this all and getting morning. What time do you eat breakfast? 8.30 and 15.00. Uh, After removing an egg from her plastic jug, she beats it with a soup spoon. Then she stirs the egg into the wok. And after a minute or two, it is ready to eat. Okay, all finished? Finished. What do you call this one? <laughs> Leaf curry. Leaf curry, yeah. <laughs> Serving up the leaf curry. Yes. You went to school in Bago? Bago in 10 standard. 10 standard? Yes. 
She washes the walk on the front porch with water hauled up from the lake. And soon she is back in the kitchen, ready now to fry up the fish. No one we asked knew the name of this fish. One reason for this may be that it is relatively new to the lake. A few years ago, the government stocked the lake with this non-indigenous species. Inlay Lake is known for its carp, but carp has been overfished and is now difficult to find. Some fishermen use the illegal method of fishing with electricity, which kills more fish than necessary. As you have seen, for these dishes, Nilar uses no seasoning other than salt and MSG. For many in this area, this is a common way to cook. Okay. Here we have a three-course meal. We have fish, fish, and water leaf fries. Water leaf and, fried. And cauliflower fried. Broccoli fried. Cauliflower. Okay. Okay. Thank you. As the sun sets over Inlay Lake, we would like to thank Nilar for her hospitality and for being our guest chef. We hope that you too have enjoyed visiting with her. Join us again next time as we delve into another fascinating chapter on the world of cooking. Until then, goodbye everybody. Are you happy all together? <laughs>